Hey guys, uh, to change the uh, tyres or the tubes on the Big Daddy or the Street Surfer, the procedure is exactly the same. Uh, the only difference between the two is that the Big Daddy has a larger tyre and tube, so the rims and everything are absolutely identical. So there's no difference in what I'm showing you with this as there would be with the Big Daddy. Now what we need is we just need to take the wheels off first of all before we get started. Um, and that's a 19mm either a socket set, shifter, or a 19 mil spanner just to undo this bolt. So I'm just using uh, the power drill to undo that. So this is the drive wheel. Now taking the drive wheel off is a bit different to the rest of them. You do need to pull and twist, pull and twist to actually remove that tire. So that's the way to get that tire off, um, ready to rock and roll to take over and change the tire or tube. Okay guys, so this is the, uh, the non-drive wheel. Uh, so taking the non-drive wheel off to change a tyre or tube, you just need the 19mm driver, 19mm spanner or an adjustable wrench. Undo that top bolt and this wheel just lifts straight off. The drive belt you need to twist and remove, but this wheel just lifts straight off, ready to take over and uh, change a tyre or tube. Now the rims are identical on both of these boards, so there is no difference to changing the tyre and tube on a Big Daddy or on Street Surfer. They're just a different tyre and tube. The rims are all identical, so the procedure doesn't change. Now this is the drive wheel, so change to the drive wheel, you do have the gear cog on the back, so there is an extra step. What you need for this is you need a 5mm Allen key or a driver for your drill, and you also need a 10mm, and you also need a pump to reinflate the tyre at the end. Now if you're replacing it because you've got a flat tyre, the tyre will already be deflated. But if it's not because of a flat tyre, um, you do need to take the air out of the tyre before you start. Okay guys, so we've deflated that tyre now, so that's ready to undo. First thing is you need to remove... You need to remove that drive gear. pop that aside. Now once we've taken that off you'll see there's little nuts that are on the back of the, the hub and there's the allen key bolts on the front. Now because the back half of this rim is threaded you do need to take those nuts off first. So you can't take the bolts out until the nuts are removed. So this is where the 10mm driver works. So we've just undone those. We turn it back over and now we need to undo these bolts. So being a two-piece rim, we need to remove everything out. That's to allow for the bolts to be removed. Once that's done, you can actually remove the two sides of the rim. So you've got the front half, the spacer in the back, and then you've got the rear half. Now that's removed, you can just pull that tire out, the tube out from the inside. that uh, we're replacing because of a, a puncture or whatever reason. And we just need to replace that with a new tube or tire. So in this case here, guys, um, you've got the choice at this stage. If you need a new tire, you just transfer the tube that's just come out into a new tire. Where this, because of a flat tube, and I'm just gonna replace the tube in this situation, what we need is we need to put a new tube inside the tire, which is just, just a matter of squeezing it and working it into the gaps. until it's all in position. And now we just need to reinstall everything back in there. Now, if you're replacing the tube, what you would have found is on the old tube, there's a little grommet that actually sits over the valve. And that's just to protect the end of that against the rim when we, uh, we put it all back together. Now, very important that when you're doing this, this, we get the front to the right direction. So first thing is get the rear, put the rear side flat down on your, on your workspace and have the valve pointing up so we know that's going to be going to the front. Now the rear for the drive wheel is really easy to identify. You've got this extra part for the drive gear. Um, with a non-drive wheel, the rear part of the hub looks identical to the front, but the rear part has thread in it. So that's the easiest way to tell the difference between the two. So we get, first of all, get the tire over the top of that rim 
make sure the tube is completely out of the way so the second half's not going to pinch it and that our little rubber grommet is in place. Then we put our spacer. Very important that you don't put that, that you put that spacer in. That actually is what keeps the bearings in their location and doesn't let the bearings get pushed out under, under pressure. We then feed the top half of the, the rim, lining it up with the little grooves for that rubber grommet. And we can now put these belts, drive these back in to put the two hubs back together. One more. That's done. Just make sure that we're all nice and neat. We flip it over. We put the washers over the three nuts. We go back to our 10 mil. Just make sure they're going correctly. Always worth checking when you're doing that that the bolts haven't been pushed back out, which in this case, one of those bolts has gone all the way through. So we need to tighten that off. And if it does do that, what you just need to do is just grab an Allen key and actually hold the back of that tyre with the Allen key, the back of that nut, and that's just so that that does clamp down tight. So that's all done, the rim's all back together. So if you were doing a non-drive wheel, that would be all that's done because you don't have this extra section on the back. But because this one's a drive wheel, we still need to put back on our drive gear and our bolts. Now if the bolts have come off and the washers have come away, when you put it back on, you've got the spring washer at the top, followed by the flat washer, just so you have them the right way around. Back to the 5mm Allen key. And that's that. So that is all completely done now. All that's required is to inflate that tyre up, 25 to 30 psi, and pop it back onto the skateboard and you're ready to rock and roll.